With 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics around the corner, how are the international community looking at these games? Today, I'm very happy to be joined by President Giovanni Malago, President of Italy's National Olympic Committee. President Malago, thank you for joining us on The Hub here on CGTN. Yes, thank you. Thank you for this uh, opportunity for me. We're getting very close to the start of the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Uh, what are the things that you're looking for um, as a former athlete and now the president of Italy's uh, Olympic Committee when you look at these Beijing Games? Our hope is uh, <clears throat> to win more than uh, the past uh, Olympic Games, the Winter Olympic Games in Korea. I think that uh, we work hardly, well, but at the same time, you know how everything was so complicated caused the pandemic, the COVID-19, but uh, we are very, very hopeful about our results. And what about the Beijing Olympics in general, from what you've seen, what you've heard about the preparation in the run-up to the Winter Games uh, in Beijing? What are your expectations for these Games? Uh, very high, very high. I spoke uh, several times with the uh, athletes, technicians, dirigents of the federations. Uh, all of us, we are very sure, we are certain about uh, that these expectations uh, will be uh, sure uh, realized in concrete. Beijing is uh, unique, is uh, representing China, and uh, China is uh, one of the most important uh, protagonists of our world. So these expectations from our world are really much more concentrated in um, the specific because um, it's um, very important that uh, after a so wonderful organization of uh, the Games in 2008 and in the mind of our uh, delegations in the Olympic team, uh, a lot of them, through uh, uh, TV, through media, through images, they um, had a very clear, strong, uh, positive representations of the Games. At the same time, these expectations, but uh, I'm sure the reality of the Winter Games in 2022 will be not less uh, uh, well organized of 2008. Okay, one reality we'll have to cope with is uh, COVID. The COVID pandemic is still ravaging uh, part of the world. Very few spectators will be allowed inside the venues of the Beijing Winter Games. The spectators will be confined to locals largely. Uh, how do you look at the impact of COVID on the upcoming Beijing Games? I want uh, to say uh, sincerely my opinion. As uh, the president of an important Olympic committee, but at the same time as uh, an IOC member, I think that COVID uh, changed uh, quite everything uh, in uh, the mind and in the body uh, of the athletes. But at the same time, there are many of them, or some of them, they found uh, a solution a key solution for uh, uh, the preparation of the games uh, inside this big, great, uh, huge problem of COVID. We have seen um, in Tokyo, just to give an example, uh, that uh, some athletes were so capable to avoid all the problems of COVID on the, and on the other hand, um, they will not find these uh, solutions. So it's not the, the, the final term, my last word about this uh, uh, unbelie unbelievable uh, item of, in the world, is that it's not possible to generalize at the same level uh, on the 206 different national Olympic committees, how they uh, fight the COVID inside their single nation. 
Right. We know that Milan and Cortina will host the, the next Winter Olympics after Beijing, that is 2026. Um, how's preparations going so far? This is another good question. I, I spent uh, one and a half before this video conference with the Chief Executive Officer of Milano Cortina, preparing a future board of the, the organizing committee. Activity job is going on well. Uh, I'm very happy about what we have done. At the same time, I want to be honest. Uh, COVID pandemic, it was not uh, a good partner in the last two years for, um, for all of us and in the specific uh, for our, uh, our commitment, our, our mission, because everything is really much more complicated and difficult, but uh, this is life. Every four years, athletes around the world prepare themselves for this uh, very occasion. Um, I know it's too early to talk about the transition uh, from Beijing to uh, Italy Winter Olympics, but uh, has there been any sort of cooperation between Italy and China uh, when it comes to you know, cooperating and transitioning into the next Olympics? I would like to, under title, a few uh, elements about uh, this uh, cooperation. First of all, that um, the relation between uh, Italian Olympic Committee and the China Olympic Committee are really wonderful. This is true since a long time, but uh, much more than even now. Second, personal relation, I would like to to say friendship uh, with uh, my colleague is uh, really, really important. Third, uh, everything will be confirmed, signed uh, with the, the flag and door ceremony, closing ceremony in Beijing in the 20th of February, when uh, will be the symbolic, but not only iconic witness between Beijing and Milano Cortina, and uh, with the two mayor of these two cities, and uh, with the two presidents of the two regions, Lombardy and uh, Veneto, and uh, the two uh, governatori of the uh, autonomous provinces of uh, Alto Adige and Trentino with the presence of the, the Italian government. And uh, this will be the, the last act of uh, this wonderful journey uh, from Beijing uh, to Milano Cortina. You know, another uh, key issue about staging the, the Olympics is a profit. Uh, very few Olympic host cities can turn a profit uh, when they do the final uh, calculation. Um, I know Italy actually is facing this question as well. There has been controversy surrounding a 60 billion US dollar uh, a revamped plan to, you know, revamped a bobsled track in Cortina. Um, how are you, as the president of Italy's uh, Olympic Committee, coping with financial issues? This was uh, one uh, item uh, with uh, a lot of uh, interest from uh, some media. I wanted to to add something uh, again concerning uh, this uh, item. Uh, first of all, that uh, we won in the 19th of uh, June uh, of uh, 2019, the bid uh, against uh, Stockholm, and inside the master plan, since the beginning, we put, of course, the revamping 
of the abandonment of Bob Sled because uh, uh, before the candidature of Milano Cortina, the president of the region, Luca Zaia, decided with uh, uh, a former act of uh, uh, the board of the region, in any case, to uh, study something as this place, this venue, uh, this uh, um, bobsled is abandoned since uh, 50 years and is uh, really a heart inside uh, the city. And uh, the, uh, the desire of Luca Zaya is uh, to think uh, and uh, to, uh, to prepare something uh, to leave as heritage, uh, as a legacy of the games, but at the same time to be utilized 12 months a year from the local population, from the foreign uh, delegations, of course, Bob, Huge and Skeleton, and at the same time around the, 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 the Bob's Lab for entertainment uh, with other uh, services and uh, uh, additional values for the place. This is uh, the, the reason why it's correct to respect the master plan, the bid and the desire of Luca Zaya and the region Veneto. Yeah, President Malago, you talk about additional values. Um, what do you think a Olympic Games, in this case Winter Olympics in particular, can really bring a country and its people? We will remember uh, these years, uh, the Games in Tokyo and the Games in Beijing. I think uh, Winter Games uh, of course, in a certain part, a marginal part will be affected from the, 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 the problem of the COVID, but uh, the games can give the best answer to the entire population in China, but in the whole world to demonstrate that uh, life is going ahead and uh, the images of uh, the sport athletes, the new uh, modern heroes uh, are the best example for uh, a new life and for support hope, especially in the young generations. This is the real mission of these games in the specific, uh, uh, the next one. So in what ways do you think uh, an Olympic Games can inspire the young people, uh, grassroots participation in sports? This is our mantra. This is our goal. We, we need to achieve uh, this result. Uh, our outcome is this one. IOC is always uh, uh, remembering us uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of mission. Uh, we try to do from Beijing to Milano Cortina this goal. You know, Thomas Bach, the IOC president, uh, modified the motto, the slogan of the Olympics. He said the motto of the Olympics is now um, higher, faster, stronger, and also together. Why do you think he added that word? Because Thomas Bach is not only my president, but is a very... Uh, marvelous person uh, and uh, he knows well what uh, the whole world is uh, asking uh, to IOC and uh, from the games and these uh, initial three words with the, the addition of the fourth together is uh, simply the, the best, the perfect combinations 
of these desires. Thank you very much, President Malago. Come back again. Thank you. Ciao, China. Ciao, Beijing. You're watching The Hub. With the Beijing Winter Olympics around the corner, I also talked to Liu Xinping, director of the Sustainability Division at the Beijing 2022 Organizing Committee General Planning Department. Also, I talked with Pan Jiahua, director of the Institute for Urban and Environmental Studies at CAS. And also with Abdullah Shahid, president of the United Nations General Assembly. And also with Scott Ross, Hollywood producer and film executive. Welcome back. Regardless of the political maneuvering of Western politicians, Chinese organizers are ready to welcome athletes from all over the world to the 2022 Winter Olympics. China is pulling out all the stops to make the coming games the greenest ever. Let's hear how Beijing, the host city, has upped the ante on green technologies and infrastructures. And what better place to be than right here at the site of the Winter Olympics. Hello guys. I'm obviously on a field trip in Zhang Jiakou, that is a co-host for the 2022 Winter Olympics. And this is the site of the Winter Games. So this sport is called ski jumping. As some of you may know, the snow is not there yet, but it will be by the time of the Olympics, that is in 100 days from here. Um, what's unique about this place is that this is zero carbon. I mean, everything, all the electricity is powered by green electricity from heating, uh, from you know, snow making machines, everything. And the green electricity comes from rural areas that is about 100 to 200 kilometers from here and uh, from solar, from wind, from hydropower, and those electricity is stored and converted in power plants that we visited and sent over to this Olympic venue. So this will be, in theory and in practice, um, the first zero carbon Winter Olympics. Super exciting. Uh, I can't wait for the games to start. But who know me understand this is so dear to my heart. Um, super exciting. Wow, National Ski Jumping Center, the site of the Winter Olympics. Professor Pan, welcome. Pleasure. What's low carbon about this place? Uh, no carbon is not uh, an accurate description. Okay. It should be zero carbon. In what uh, ways? In many ways, number one, energy. Here, all the energy, the purely yeah. zero carbon electricity. You see, lighting, heating, yeah. transport, that's everything. Well, in the northern part of China, heating is essential, in particular mm -hmm. in winter. And, you know, in the past, even now, in northern China, heating is from the burning of coal, yeah. you know, the burning of uh, gas, natural gas. And all these are very carbon intensive. And now here, such a huge, you know, structure, we use zero carbon electricity. That means that, you know, in your room, in your house, in the buildings, in your offices, everywhere. Zero carbon is not a problem. There were many new measures and initiatives included in the bid to hold the Green Winter Olympics. We innovated our working mechanism and established a new standard in preparing for the Winter Olympics. This Beijing standard will provide a good model for the future work of the International Olympic Committee. We insisted on low carbon. Our priority was to protect the mountains and waters of the environment, which was underlined in our general policy. In fact, this green policy was integrated into the planning, design and construction of the winter sports venues. During the construction of the Olympic Village, we worked to protect 127 plants in the area. We relocated plants near the venue or to other places that were similar to their previous habitats so that they could continue to grow. So far, we've transplanted more than 24,000 plants in about 300 acres.
，比如说，如果这个赛赛道上有一棵需要保护的植物，他们可能会把赛道。We also set strict green standards in construction, and each venue has those low carbon initiatives in place. For example, in the construction of the new speed skating stadium, different parts were designed in different ways to reduce the use of building materials and resources. Through these green initiatives, we've also managed to drive the development of environmentally friendly technologies and models in the region. Because of these new ideas, great progress has been made in the Shougang, Yanqing, and Zhangjiakou areas, such as the completion of the Beijing-Zhangjiakou high-speed railway, the improvement of the local air quality, and the building of environmentally friendly watersheds. Going green is a lot of work. For the first time in Olympic history, all six venues will be powered by renewables, and that will cut carbon dioxide emissions by 320,000 tons and cut the use of coal by 128,000 tons. Legacy venues from the 2008 Summer Games have been converted for the winter events. For example, the famous Water Cube, the swimming pool that hosted multiple new world records, will become the Ice Cube for curling events. A unique ice-making technology is used to cut harm to the ozone layer and lower energy use of refrigeration systems. That saves energy. That saves power by more than 30 percent. And over 85 percent of all vehicles serving the Beijing Olympics will be clean energy vehicles, another record. Well, I understand that this is going to be the first time uh, Olympic Games are going to be held with uh, renewable energy and uh, green technology. It showcases the technology and scientific knowledge uh, that humanity has been able to achieve. I have every confidence uh, that uh, this uh, Olympics is going to be very, very successful. The U.S. action seriously violates the principle of political neutrality in sports established by the Olympic Charter, runs counter to the motto of a more united Olympics and stands against the broader community of athletes and sports enthusiasts of the world. Uh, how do you look at the, you know, Washington's boycott of 2022 Beijing Olympics? Well, frankly, I think it's a pretty empty gesture. Nobody invited them. They are not coming here three weeks of quarantine. You know, it's easy to boycott something which you didn't want to attend in the first place. We experienced the Olympics as a wonderful uh, sports event and not a political battlefield. The thought of boycotting an Olympic is almost an anathema, is, is, is against everything what the Olympics is about. The Olympics is about friendship first, competition second. And yes, they're competitive and we all want to win more golds than anyone else. But the Olympic Village is a unique place and the Olympics is a unique opportunity for the world to come uh, together under the competitive nature of sports, leaving politics, ideology and all of that stuff behind. And the melting pot of what the Olympic Village is, is incredible. So I I'm disappointed that um, American and some Western diplomats will not go. I think that's exactly against what Olympics stand for. Yeah. So in more talk, more compassion, more, more, more caring is what works. Sports can do something that diplomacy and politics cannot. I think we've seen that. You know, I think diplomacy sometimes gets caught up and, and worse yet, the, 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 the prospect of any armed conflict is just is, is frightening and horrible, and I can't imagine it happening in, in the modern age. So there must be a way to be able to bring our two cultures together and realize that both the United States and China benefits as a relationship. I, you know, I, I listened to your last, to your last uh, guest, and the concept of only having a single superpower in the world I don't, I don't understand what that means in the world of globalization. I, I think there needs to be cooperation. I, I'm, re, I, I, I'm reminded of uh, Yo E D E beside DR, which is yeah. you know uh, the famous uh, French first all. competition second line, which is yeah, which is critical in in these days. This will be the second time in 12, 13 years that China will have hosted a second Olympics. Um, 
what are you looking for when you look at these uh, you know, winter games? Well, you know, because I'm an entertainment guy, I was blown away by the opening ceremonies of the uh, last Beijing Olympics. And I'm the guy who watches the commercials during Super Bowl. You know? So yeah, I, I was too. really, I'm really excited to see exactly what happens in the opening, in the opening ceremonies of the games and the amazing technology, craftsmanship, and artistry that the Chinese will bring to this year's Olympics. That's what I'm most excited about. Beijing. Beijing. Olympics uh, symbolizes humanity coming together. It symbolizes uh, peace. It symbolizes sustainable development. It symbolizes uh, good health and prosperity. Uh, the Olympic truce is all about it. And uh, I would uh, call upon uh, all uh, to come together, uh, celebrate uh, humanity.